On the third night of a 2021 camping trip with my daughter, my world fissured. Camping had become our thing in the early months of COVID, our necessary reprieve from the world. The magic of nature also wove through Aiden, causing her to break open and share with me what she'd feared sharing the previous summer. She came out to me. I knew Aiden wasn't straight. <laughs> After all, she's my daughter and she's so like me. But I was not prepared for what she revealed this time. Like many teens these days, she has a robust personal world online. COVID required it, and her natural predilection for technology and the ease of hiding behind the screen honed it in. I had just cracked open a canned cocktail after a lovely day of hiking. The plan was to sit for a bit before dinner and a campfire. I handed her a small glass of what I was drinking because I'm that mom. She played some stupid game on her phone. I journaled, hiding my annoyance that even without us having cell service, she was on tech. The six smiles seeped into me. The calm of the trees and the crisp mountain air lulled me. Or maybe it was the alcohol. My reverie was broken by the sound of my daughter bursting into tears. I looked up in alarm. She gasped, Mom, I'm so worried about Aki. She keeps telling me she's going to kill herself. I can't talk to her. What if she does something? Aki was one of her online friends, a 21-year-old girl who lived in, with her parents in England. She was mute, so it made sense that the Internet was her world. And it made odd sense that she'd so, grown so close to my 15-year-old open-minded, big-hearted daughter. But I didn't like Aki. Aki was super dark. My daughter was already battling depression. That Aiden had suicidal ideations and had been cutting had been a revelation earlier in the year after she fainted in front of me and I ended up taking her to Rady's Children's. She was in intensive therapy and psychiatric care. I was trying desperately to keep her from the dark side my instincts screamed about Aki, but what could I do without alienating Aiden? And where was the risk when this too old other kid was in England? Panic flooded me at the magnitude of her anxiety attack. Stamping it down, I turned to her. Honey, that's terrifying for sure, but love, if you could text her, what would you be able to do? I don't know she sobbed as I held her. When she regained the ability to speak, she said, Mom, I have something to tell you. I suddenly wished I hadn't had a cocktail. Aki is my girlfriend. We're in love. She's my soulmate. I felt the ground shift under me. My kid is precocious. But what 21-year-old wants to be with a 15-year-old who's across the planet? The illogic of it all hit me, but I immediately recalled my teenage years. When I was 15, my mom didn't like my best friend. She pronounced her a bad influence and decreed I was never to see her again. I dug my heels in and held on to that friendship with the ferocity of a terrier with a rat in its mouth. My mom turned out to be right, but the way she handled it was so wrong, I ended up far more damaged by that friendship than if she'd let me figure it out. I wasn't going to repeat my mom's shitty parenting. I needed to know more without pushing Aiden away. I tried to sound interested as well as properly concerned. So what's your plan? Still going to college? I bit down on the bile that formed, thinking, what if she isn't? I am. Oh, good. Are you thinking England or here? As soon as I graduate from high school, Aki is coming here. I nodded. At least she wasn't planning on running to England. Does Aki being mute bother you at all? I mean, her ability to communicate with you will be limited, and kid... You're kind of verbal. How will it feel to never hear the words, 
I love you. She shrugged, though I could see wisps of thought cross her mind. I'll be fine. I'll learn sign. I paused. I was about to walk on the edge of a sinkhole. You know, honey, there's a lot of age difference between you two. Mom, when I'm 30 and she's 36, it won't matter. I couldn't believe she threw that line at me. I almost rolled my eyes. But there was a bigger worry digging at me, though I didn't have the pulse of it yet, and I needed her to understand that Aki wasn't good for her without my decreeing. She had to end it. Well, honey, I'm happy for you, I forced out around my teeth. Looking for an inroad, I carefully tossed out. I do need to say, though, the age thing. Aki is an adult, and you're a minor. There are statutory rape laws. She blanched slightly before digging in her heels. Oh, that's why Aki isn't coming until I'm 18, she nodded. Problem solved. The next month tri saw me trying to worm out what was bothering me. Beyond Aki being too old, being mute and seemingly content to live in her parents' home, doing nothing for her future, beyond stirring the depression in my kid. I spoke to my therapist about a cut on Aiden's arm, which I was sure she lied about, and how I was worried she was still suicidal. You have to read her messages, my therapist said. I dropped my jaw. I hated that idea. Aiden having privacy was a fundamental moral code of mine. To read her private communications was forbidden. It's not about violating her privacy, my therapist continued, without me saying a word. It's about keeping her safe. I let the words fall over me. It wasn't crawling through her things for information I didn't need to know. Suicidal ideation far outweighed privacy. OK, I stammered, feeling queasy. You're right. But how was my next problem? I was working from home, but Aiden was home too. How could I look when she was always around? Two days later, an unexpected opportunity presented itself. I'm going outside to the garage to do some art, she pronounced. I got up from my desk for more water and walked past her now empty bedroom. She'd left her PC on. The Discord app chat window was still open. Looking around like a kid about to get caught rifling through her parents' bedside table drawers, I dashed into her room and sat on the chair. I scrolled madly while keeping an ear for footsteps. Breaking her lies about cutting was critical, but I could not let her catch me. I found clear evidence of the level of Aiden's obsession with Aki and the fragility of the situation. Aki regularly talked about suicide, and Aiden was terrified. Aki was Aiden's world. And me? They decried me a nosy, clueless adult. Aki promised to help Aiden be free of me, I would never interfere with them. Their love was too great. I didn't find anything about cutting. But I was chewing on something bigger, something that hadn't yet made itself clear to me. I could feel the risk of being caught increasing even as I wanted to scream. I scrolled to the latest message, hoping to God I hadn't made it look like I'd been in the thread. Over the next week, I seized every opportunity to tap her messages. The best was a two hour long driver's training session. But stupid me, I didn't have her passwords. Before the session, she had a PC problem. She asked for my help. I stood over her as she logged in and watched her hands type her password. One, we win. The instructor showed up. As soon as the car pulled away, I ran into her room. Naively, I was still looking for cutting revelations. I was desperate to be right. I scrolled fiercely to reach messages from where she'd cut while we were camping and lied about it. Instead, the bottom of my cracked world crumbled under me. Aiden was sending Aki nude photos, though the photos themselves had been deleted from the thread. She was calling Aki mommy and her dom. 
She was watching BDSM videos. My kid, who had not even had a first kiss yet, there was a sick depravity to it all. Clear evidence of my child, my child being manipulated by an adult. I wanted to puke. I snapped some screenshots, but in my hysteria, I still fixated on proving the tamer issue of cutting. Time ran out. I returned her machine to how it had been when she left. I was besides myself, queasy from the sexual things I'd read, not in a prudish way of a mom denying her daughter is a human, but what I saw was distorted and violent, and it was with a sick fuck of an adult. This was bigger than me. I needed help. I shared it all with a trusted friend. She responded unexpectedly. She told me to lean in. Suggested I tell Aiden I was booking a trip for us to England. I bucked so hard. I wasn't going to make a fucking trip to England. My friend clarified. She wasn't saying we'd actually go, but saying we would go would let me see what reactions would come. Her words landed, so I leaned in, letting the idea percolate in my subconscious. A few days later, I took Aiden to dinner. I asked her to leave her phone at home. At dinner, I acted interested as if I embraced this partnership. And then I asked Aiden to schedule a Zoom with her, Aki, and me. Aiden paled. I insisted. She demanded I set it up. I told her, no, her person her task. The ride home was quiet. Aiden set up a Discord text chat with her, me, and Aki, yelling through the house, there, now you can get to know Aki. I played along a little. The next day, coming home from an event, I asked if she'd set up the Zoom. No, Aki isn't comfortable on video. Can't you just use text? Nah, I want to Zoom, honey. Don't you want your person to know me as much as me, them? Then you set it up! She sounded like a five-year-old, not someone ready for life partnership at the whopping age of 15. No, your job, sweetie. She felt quiet. When we got home, she slammed her door. I could hear fierce typing. Fifteen minutes later, she emerged angry. Mom, Aki isn't comfortable. Can't you just text her? I repeated my need for a Zoom. Then Aki texted that she wasn't comfortable being seen. I said I wouldn't judge how she looked. Aki dug in her heels. She didn't understand why it had to be my way. Texting was all I needed, which is when I got mad. I fired off. I don't understand why you think it's appropriate to tell the mother of your girlfriend how it will be or won't be. Everyone else I know looks to impress the parents of their significant other, Aki demanded. Am I not allowed an opinion on how things are done? No, I typed. My daughter is a minor. Aki sent, I've not committed one thing to your daughter that might make me a predator. I stood up straighter. I had suspected she or he was a predator, but I hadn't said those words. I'm asking for one Zoom. I decline. You decline? A Zoom isn't necessary to get to know me. It is for me. Aki stopped texting. A moment later, Aiden emerged from her room in hysterics. Aki had just said they were done, that it was for the best, and then had gone quiet. As Aiden came to me enraged and terrified of losing Aki, I hit a button on my phone, shutting off her access to the internet. She freaked more. What did you do? I let her rage, let her cry. She insisted on how wrong I was. I kept repeating, all I asked for was a Zoom, honey. Don't you want your person to want to know me? Things started to click for her, but she was still crying and raging. I cracked. I released my biggest fear. Honey, I said, pulling up a web page. Discord is on the dirty dozen lists of sites for internet predators. 
I showed her the headline. Then I scrolled down. And honey, you're on the last step. I'm terrified someone is going to show up at the house, steal you, and sex traffic you. Her face reflected shock. She read the stages of grooming. I watched as she put it all together. Her anger turned to horror as she admitted she had never seen this person on video, that the photos she'd gotten could have been of anyone. She crumpled into my arms. We spent the rest of the night with her crying, but it was only a few minutes after she'd realized I was right that she also started raging against what had been done to her. Somehow, not only had I managed to navigate this horror without pushing her away, I had drawn her closer. In the following days, I filed a claim with the FBI. They took Aiden's phone, but in the time between my first diving in and the culmination, Aki had deleted key texts from the thread. The agent said it was absolutely clear what had been going on, but there wasn't enough legal evidence for a case. They copied Aiden's phone so that if there was another case, perhaps it would help them break it. He could see I was upset, he explained. In the battle for resources, I was an involved parent of an older kid, and I'd gotten her out. My being a good parent meant I would have to live with my unquenchable desire to find and end that asshole. There would be no resolution for me or Aiden. The agent handed me Aiden's phone, but told me he shouldn't give it back. The nude stills and videos of her and her camera roll made me guilty of possessing lewd photos of a minor. Go home, he said, and wipe her phone. As if returning my property was a big thing he could do for us. Aiden is doing better these days. Her meds are working. She even had a real girlfriend last year, replete with the innocence of the first time holding someone's hand. And we're closer than ever. To keep it that way, I'll make sure we camp every year. I've never lost my belief in the importance of Aiden having privacy. So when I submitted this story that is both mine and hers, I asked if she was OK with it. I told her if she changed her mind, I would withdraw. But each time I asked, she gave me consent. Because my kid, she doesn't want this to happen to anyone else. That is Kelly Bowen. <laughs>